It's your boy Paul. And the smell of fall is in the air. And if you guys have been following this channel, that can only mean one thing. Half off at the garden centers out here in Houston, Texas. It is October, it feels great outside. It is a perfect time to plant some hardy perennials. And with half off in the air, it's time to go cash out on some plants. So join me, we're gonna do another bargain, plant shopping, plant buying, and gardening extravaganza all in this video. But before we get started, always remember, Earth is my planet. Earth is my planet. And we have arrived Houston Garden Center in the fall, half off regularly priced plants. Y'all can see all the hay, fall is in the air. Let's get to shopping. So the first plant I'm gonna grab is going to be a crepe myrtle with this purple foliage. Now crepe myrtles are spammed throughout the Southeast, but I do want a small tree slash large shrub that does have this color. This is pretty much the only thing that is non-tropical that will have this color and flower besides Allura Petalum. So I'm gonna grab one of these to throw in the yard. They're gonna be $45, retail is 90, which is crazy. crazy. They're in seven gallon pots, which is excessive, but nevertheless, I'm gonna grab one. So here's a slight indication of the color of the flower. So yeah, now it's just a matter of picking out the biggest one that looks the healthiest. I think I'm gonna go with this one, man. I'm really gonna try and have it be a single trunk tree. Look at this sea of lime green. So the next plant I'm getting is this Elysium parviflorum. Now I have grown some Elysiums that died in the drought. I'm gonna buy one of these. The lime green is crazy. This is a sunshine Elysium. So I probably will grab one, maybe splurge on two and uh, have a nice lime green evergreen pop in the yard. I'm gonna get three Texas sages i had a couple and they did well they have these that are like super green and then they got ones that are kind of more of a mint so i'm gonna get some super greens and some mints and y'all can see the flowers are gorgeous the bees and butterflies are working them right now so here's another absolute beauty that is native you guys know i like getting as many native plants as possible you have the dwarf wax myrtle so these guys I mean, dwarf my, my ass cheeks. This thing is huge. I'm gonna grab some more evergreen native shrubs to throw on the backdrop of my garden. So I'll probably pick up one or two of these as well. Now, I don't necessarily know why I'm gonna grab one of these. It is an Italian cypress. I just think it'll look really cool in my yard, especially kind of with the forest vibe. It's evergreen and look at the color of it. This one is more of a, a light hue. So last and not least, I'm gonna grab this Fuyu Persimmon. I already have one of these, but it's just planted in a bad spot. So I'm gonna grab one, give it more prime real estate, and hopefully I'll have some persimmons popping off for ya boy. All right guys, so we are back and the first plants I'm throwing in the ground are the beautiful Sunshine Elysium or the Anises. These smell super good and I'm putting them in the front yard, but this spot is super hard to garden in, I'm not gonna lie, because the sun sets, so these will get direct sunlight in the evening. However, most of the day it's in the shade, and with having established trees such as the magnolia behind me and the two oak trees is they suck a lot of the moisture out of the soil, and these guys like having moist soil. So this may be a battle, but for $10 a piece, I figured it was worth it. I'll probably actually go back and grab a couple more for the backyard to have that native tropical especially lime green highlight in a more shady area so hopefully these guys will thrive will survive and being in the front if they look sad then i'll be able to monitor their water needs let's go ahead and get two of them in right here in this bed so as i dig a hole just check the surroundings dark green and that's why having a slime lime anise will definitely work these guys grow from zone 6a all the way to 9b Oh yeah, lights up the space like a Christmas tree, right? Hey, it does though. And another thing about the anises is, is they can tolerate a bunch of different soil types such as clay, sand, nice fertile loam, but they need a lot of water okay and so that's why putting it here is definitely a calculated risk but for ten dollars i rolled the dice because natively these are a wetland indicator they do propagate easily from cuttings if you would like to grow more and honestly 
I just want to see how these guys do, but that's why I'm trying to get them acclimated in the fall slash winter when there is more of abundance of water versus planting them in the late spring and or summer. But check out the absolutely architectural structure of this clean evergreen. Slime, lime, definitely lights up a shady space like a Christmas tree, playboys. Woo! So I never thought it would come to this, guys. I think I'm running out of space. So I'm looking for a location to put in this beautiful codeine crepe myrtle, right? Purple crepe myrtle. But it's in a seven gallon pot. And with all of these pine roots, I don't even know if I'll be able to dig a big enough hole. I was thinking of having it in this lush corner, but this area already has tons of purple in terms of flowers, but it does strictly have green in terms of foliage color. So I could tuck it back there. But what I think I'm going to do is try and put this one in the front of the bed. If it doesn't work, then I'll tuck it in that corner where I have a dead avocado tree. That ain't gonna work. So that didn't work. So I'm gonna place it where I had a rose bush that died. Now this location may not be ideal seeing as it does get sunlight in the morning but not all day underneath this pine tree canopy but with that being said this is pretty much the only option for a purple colored small tree so i went with the crepe myrtle it grows in zone seven to nine it's not picky about the soil but again for optimal bloom and color it should be a full sun but on half off days i risk it for the plant biscuit and this is the only space it could fit in. So next up on the chopping block, we are throwing in my Italian spruce. Now this was just completely an impulse buy, but y'all can see the foliage color is amazing. And I'm gonna put it right next to my pine tree, right against that fence line where it will get a good half day's worth of sun as soon as it overtakes this bush and I want it right here because there pretty much is nothing else that can go vertically in this spot and I can catch its view from my living room windows which definitely looks cool it already looks like I'm staring into a forest so just adding another variety to fill in this narrow spot and a plant that can go next to your house without damaging it that is a tall evergreen tree is pretty cool so I just got one of these guys I'm gonna put it right back here and we're gonna see how it does, all right? It likes more like sandy, well-draining soil. We do have heavy clay soil and a lot of humidity, which isn't necessarily a Mediterranean climate, but regardless, I'm gonna try it, man. This is more for the people on the West Coast, but hey, we third coast represent, let's get it in. Now, let me break down my methodology. So this tree grows about three feet wide, 50 feet tall. So it will fill up this space and it can grow next to structures without damaging the foundations or walls of your house. So that's perfect. It grows in zone seven through nine. And again, it likes dry soil. So next to this pine tree, I think it will suckle out a lot of the water that hits the ground. So hopefully this dude can thrive in an area that isn't inundated with water because it's drought tolerant. Let's be real. Now, the next plant we are throwing in is going to be my Fuyu Per persimmon I already have one of these which is close by but it has been in a lot of shade so it hasn't produced any fruits and I have one gap right here where I am surrounded by a ton of my Duranta I got my arrowwood viburnum next to me I got this nice little Mexican bird of paradise I have Tacomas but I have a dead avocado that needs to be dug up. So in its place, I'm gonna put in this Fuyu persimmon. It is deciduous, so if it gets super cold, which has been killing all of my citrus, my avocados, then it will be perfectly fine in this area. So I'm hoping it grows really tall, blocks the house, and if it fruits all the way up there, I'll hop on the roof and pluck some fruits. Let's get it in, man. It's Fuyu time. Evidently, this is the best tasting persimmon as well and i can finally prove it because i spent three whole dollars on one just to make sure i actually like this fruit now this plant is drought tolerant once it is established zone seven through ten can tolerate a variety of soil types and there's no slow-mo for this tree because it already done lost its leaves by the time i got to editing this video my bad okay guys so we are in the backyard at this point and the next plant i am throwing in is going to be my dwarf wax myrtle interesting evergreen native as i mentioned so i'm going to put it in the backyard now it doesn't get full sun which of course a wax myrtle would prefer but i'm just going to try it in this area why because it was half off and two 
I want some evergreens for when all my deciduous trees start to lose their leaves. I'm trying to obstruct this fence to the best of my ability. So this little dwarf guy qualifies. I want to move him right next door to my plum tree. So the southern wax myrtle, the dwarf variety luckily won't get as big as its ginormous counterpart, which is like 15 feet tall, but it can grow from New Jersey all the way down to Mexico. So zone 6B slash 7 all the way to 10. And it does have a unique color of foliage. It is the host plant for hair streak butterflies. And if it does bury, the fruits will be munched up by birds. It's a nice evergreen that likes full sun to part sun. So it should thrive here commonly known as the texas sage now this dude is a super light mint color i'm gonna plant it underneath my pine tree because this area does tend to dry out quicker having the roots from a large established tree this is a drought tolerant more desert dwelling species which is perfect especially since it has been so hot lately and also because this plant can survive a freeze and still remain evergreen pristine and it has amazing flowers so we're gonna get the first one which is the lightest color one in this bed because all this dark green needs a little contrast so we gotta throw in the Lucifylum frutensis in this area. Now I did previously have one of these planted and it did thrive, it is drought tolerant. And so with the pine tree sucking off all the moisture, this guy was popping zones eight through 10, full to part sun, and it pops off with amazing purple blooms. You gotta love it. This truly is a nice piece of mint in the garden. And this is a great one for any rocky slash desert garden landscape it also is the larval host for the kalilta silk moth and the fiona checka spot that's a wildlife benefit baby and all right ladies and gentlemen so we got the texas sage in the ground it is a completely different day my hair is completely chopped all the way off and it has been a minute since i actually shot this video it has taken so long for me to actually get to chopping it up editing it and then releasing it but i hope you guys did enjoy if you did please smash the like button and once again in zone nine i mean things are still green i am blessed to be in a subtropical climate we'll see if a freeze comes through this year but it is always a good time to hit up garden center even in the winter if you live in a subtropical climate to try and get some steals and some deals on some plants with that being said drop a comment down below if y'all enjoyed and i got two more videos lined up so until then peace killing these songs leaving a bloody life i roost and i'm in it to win it so i'm somebody that you should get used to